Hi, it's Dustin Lanier. Thanks for listening. Please find me on LinkedIn for original public sector operations content every week. And please reach out to me if I and my team of procurement professionals at Civic Initiatives can help you be a public procurement change agent. I'll be part of a panel for the National Cooperative Procurement Partners, NCPP, on Wednesday the 8th. And it'll be a discussion about cooperative contracting and how to make good use of it as public center and C, and then also how to be a good partner as a holder of cooperative contracts. Civic Initiatives makes use of four cooperative contracts nationally and then several other individual state level contracts. And of course, I was with public sector before that, so I feel like I have some perspective to bring to it. I do a speech that relates to this topic called Five Things I Wish I Knew that has some of these concepts For the purpose of this, I'm going to talk about the six interrogative questions related to cooperative contracting, specifically who, why, what, when, how, and where. So first, who does cooperative contracting serve? I would say it's important to realize it serves both public procurement officials and government service providers equally. It is a shared partnership in the sense that it helps government to retain its intellectual property through its actions, and it allows service providers to move more nimbly, but it definitely is a shared value. So then that speaks to why, which is why should co-ops be a tool in the toolkit? So for individuals who maybe are in a smaller entity, these contracts are negotiated at scale with entities that are usually large enough to be able to create confidence in terms of strong terms and conditions strong rates, expectations on delivery approach. And by taking advantage of the work that's been done by other peers, the government entity can leapfrog forward into solving their actual direct problem, knowing that they're taking advantage of hard work that was done by others. And importantly, it means that if you have only so much time that you can use to create things new and from scratch with the work that you have to do, why not solve some of the problems through things that have already been vetted, and then use your precious time on things that can't be solved through a co-op contract. So now what? What key problem do these contracts solve for both of these parties that have equal stake in success of the use of these portfolios? I think the number one thing is that the cost and complexity of RFP response really can't be underestimated in terms of getting to an effective set of options. In the five things I wish I knew game, I talk about the fact that RFPs can cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to respond to. And I'll inevitably get a look from someone in the audience that has no idea that it costs that much to do. And it absolutely for large RFPs or complex RFPs that require extended narratives and methodologies, these can be very expensive, certainly in terms of the opportunity cost of time, but there is actual cost in terms of production, third-party support, and taking people off of otherwise productive projects. And it is absolutely true that otherwise qualified vendors who likely would have been a good option if aspects of that RFP are either too time-consuming or something that's already been solved by a cooperative contract and therefore the vendor doesn't have to pursue one-off work through RFPs, that you will have lower value to your bid responses. So now for the win. So when competition is still needed to find the right expert, cooperative contracts can still be the method. I've talked for years about something I call bake-offs, which is small form competitions that can be done inside of the confines of a cooperative contract. We've led several of those and we've responded to several of those. These individual competitions can be focused primarily on specific scope, and verify things like available staffing, and it can be dramatically faster than the normal RFP process. I would suggest to keep in mind that if you're going to do that route, try to limit what you have in your bake-off to things that are unique for your situation and don't replicate an entire RFP within a task order. So how? How to be a good partner with a co-op contract? I think it's rooted in understanding that to be a good partner, you have to be providing a solution to a problem that the entity has, that they need solved, and they need solved with urgency. 
So in my opinion, having a co-op contract is only useful if the client has a problem that needs to be solved. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with communicating in a global way about the availability of contracts. That makes sense. But just having a co-op contract by itself is really secondary to me. It's getting to know people who are likely to have the problem that needs to be solved as a business professional and an individual first in order to then get to the point where they have described enough of a problem that you can not only solve that problem, but also enable them to solve that problem quickly. So finally, where? So where do you find out about these problems? Well, we attend a lot of professional conferences. I think that's a great place to get to meet individuals, to learn about their priorities. If they are solving a problem with a cooperative contract that is similar to yours, would they consider to add yours? Or do you have some specific and unique value add that brings to the tables? Also, industry days are excellent opportunities if different entities are hosting things around their market segments or they're doing uh, surveys of their performance. I do see different states and public entities will from time to time pursue a procurement reform initiative and try to gather information related to the work. It's a good way to try to understand and get to be able to contribute. So if you can get out there and learn and give back to build knowledge, then you will build work over time and then good things will come from that. So different strategies will be true in different segments. We sell services. So for someone who sells goods in a highly commoditized market segment, some of this advice may be less timely, but this is what we have seen be successful for us in the growth and the use of our cooperative contracts. And we are very appreciative for all of them that we have. So again, join us on Wednesday at one central about how to navigate government with NCPP and Tammy Rhymes and the great panel group that she's pulled together.